Hey managers of the Super Conference, this is your commissioner Tyler Burkhardt here with the Week 8 Recap. A lot of interesting matches here and a lot of teams uh, making a move this week. So let's get to the awards and find out uh, which teams those are. First of all, for Best Manager of the Week, a lot of different nominees here, but I'm going to go with Carson of Oakland Velos. Now Carson is one of the teams here that has been very average the whole entire year. I don't think I've really mentioned his team at all for good or bad things on this show. But it's time to highlight his team because they've gotten good. Uh, he put up last week the fourth most fantasy points, got a clutch win against San Antonio. He traded for Darren Sproles, who I think is really going to help him out in the future, teaming up with Steven Jackson. And when you got Tom Brady and some breakout players like Victor Cruz, you know, things are starting to come together. So because of this, uh, you'll see that I like Oakland a lot uh, this week. And I, I really like the moves that he made. So uh, for that, Week 8, Manager of the Week. Worst Manager of the Week, I'm going to finally put Evan Armstrong of the Cleveland Shamans at this spot. Now, I looked through all the other teams, and majority of the teams have made, you know, either a lot of key acquisitions throughout the year, or they've made some trades. A lot of teams have made trades. I feel like Cleveland is the only team that hasn't done so, and I think we're starting to see the side effects of this. Uh, now, Evan, is I think he's always been a great manager in our league. He uh, makes some good decisions with his rosters, but he once again just hasn't tackled the uh, categories that he needs to and when you settle for players like McCluster and Gaffney in your lineup when you're playing a key division opponent in the Kiln Legend um, you're going to suffer and so because of the loss now he's three games back of first and uh, his playoff hopes are almost out of sight so um, did not like what he did this week and he's going to almost run the table if he wants to get into the playoffs. The most val valuable player is Steven Jackson of Oakland Velos for Week 8. He put up 31 fantasy points, and he, if he didn't even hit close to 20, there's no way Oakland was going to win that matchup. So um, helped Oakland get to the 4-4 four and four mark, and really only about 11 points out of the wild card at this point. Uh, so uh, his team's looking really solid. I like what he's done. And Steven Jackson was a great reason why. The best matchup easily goes to Green Bay Legends versus Minnesota Bryans. Now, a little credit here to Adam Wirtz. This game shouldn't have even been close. There is no way. And Adam, I know if you would have played Christian Ponder over Drew Brees, you would have won. But I got to give you a ton of credit. You made the key acquisitions that you needed to make this week. And you went all in to try to beat Minnesota. And I give you a ton of credit for it. However, in the end, Brian Edmondson made the right moves by playing Baldwin this week as well as uh, uh, Emmanuel Sanders, who I don't think either of these players are like absolutely amazing, but they had good matchups and they got about 70 yards each and just got him enough points to win. So two managers went head-to-head, -head and it just so happens that one squeaked out the other. So a great matchup between these two teams. I think they'll still both get in the playoffs. The biggest upset, I didn't see any this week. I really didn't. The closest one was Fargo and Bargo over San Diego Wales, and that's only because of the records. But to be honest with you, I'm starting to believe that Fargo and Bargo is a better team. They have a three-game winning streak after an 0-5 start. If you could look at his lineup, he has key players on his team like Bradshaw, Fitzgerald, A.J. Green, and Cedric Benson. You know, And then I look at uh, San Diego Wales, and other than possibly like a, a Philip Rivers or Miles Austin, I, I don't see any huge impact players for him. Um, you know, you can maybe, maybe make a case when Felix Jones get back, but with Murray and how well he's been doing, I think it's going to be a timeshare. So uh, I really am starting like Fargo and Bargo here, and um, that's why I don't see it as an upset, but the closest thing we have. So let's get to the rankings. Um, you'll see one through six has stayed the exact same. We have only four teams, San Fran, Minnesota, Kiln, and Washington, that have a five and three or better record. 
then you're going to see a ton of teams at four and four or possibly three and five, all competing for the last probably two positions. Um, Oakland Velas makes the big move of the week, jumping from 11 to seven. Uh, otherwise, um, San Diego Wales is probably the only other team that made a move the other direction down four spots to 12 as he now has the second lowest amount of points in our fantasy league and only a few points above LA Seismic Quakes. So uh, really at this point, I kind of look at it, at it and I only see two or three teams out of it. You know, LA clearly is looking to next year with his moves. New York, Yankees, same thing. And New York Blackouts now at that tipping point where they have to start thinking about possibly next year. But all the other teams are clearly in the race. So it'll be an interesting few weeks to see what happens. So let's get to week nine. Welcome to Rivalry Week, um, which will change our rivals next year uh, depending on what conference you're in and make them in the conference. So this will be the last year you possibly will be rivals with this person. But for best matchup, I love the Cleveland versus Seattle matchup. Not only do we got some brotherly love going on here with the Armstrongs, but I see both of these teams going over 90 points. And uh, look what happens with whatever team wins. If Cleveland wins, Seattle could be once again one game behind San Diego with time running out. And he could possibly tied with Fargo and Bargo, who is four or sorry, 0 and 5 at one point. Huge. Meanwhile, if Seattle wins, Cleveland is pretty much out of the playoff hunt. They would have to run the table, which I don't think they would. So it's a huge matchup for both teams, with the uh, both being brothers, both putting up a lot of points. I think this week it's going to be a great, great matchup. I don't even know who I'm going to pick at. The biggest upset, I'm going to go with San Diego over Kilm Legend. San Diego needs a big win this week. Has kind of been embarrassed the last two weeks. And with Stafford and Megatron on buys, I think he's going to finally pull, pull it out. You know, Kiln Legend really only has two players, Marco Murray, who's going up against actually a great Seattle rushing defense. And he has some weak subs in, like early Doucette and Steve Breston. I don't get excited about those players. And meanwhile, Phillip Rivers, I think, will make a statement or try to make a statement against Green Bay. Miles Austin goes against Seattle, and I love the Houston defense going against the Cleveland Browns. So I see San Diego upsetting Kiln here and trying to get back uh, the lead in the AFC West. Finally, the predictor winner for Week 8 goes to San Diego and San Fran. Uh, they got six of their eight predictions right, so they will pick up five FAB points. Uh, otherwise, that's it. We'll see what Rivalry Week has in store for us. I'm your commissioner, Tyler Burkhart. Game on.